these trends have come and other trends will come and yet others will come, but this is a constant. And every time new trends come, guess who they cannot tolerate? They cannot tolerate this religion. So the fact that they cannot tolerate this religion doesn't make the religion invalid. When Najmi the Hawa, Ma Ladna Sahibukum Wama Hawa. That's when a group of men surprised King Dawood in his chambers. He's the prophet that had 99 wives, right? No, it says, Hey, just use Bayina TV. We break down every section of the Quran into straightforward, understandable pieces. I started Bayina TV to make the Quran accessible for people of all levels of understanding. The beauty and guidance found within its passages shouldn't be limited to scholars. Click the link to start your journey into the Quran and Arabic today. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى علمه شديد القوى ذو مرة فاستوى وهو بالأفق الأعلى ثم دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى فأوحى إلى عبده ما أوحى ما كذب الفؤاد ما رأى أفتمارونه على ما يرى رب الشحف صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد once again everyone السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته a couple of things to highlight quickly before I move on to ayah number four for our discussion um, I want you to take note of the institution of risala risala meaning uh, revelation itself the institution of risala the belief in revelation is made up of three components uh, the first component is the angel. Second component is the book or the message that the angel is delivering. And the third is the receiver of the message, the messenger. So the book, the angel, and the messenger. And what we're seeing in this passage is going to be a discussion that involves all three of them. It's not just about the messenger. It's not just about the angel. It's not just about the book. It's all three components. Right now, so far, we haven't been introduced to the angel. To Jibreel alayhi salam. But what we have learned are two things. We learned one thing about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and one thing about the Quran. So the one thing we've learned about the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is that he is not lost or deluded and his character and the time that he spent with them is credibility enough. And the thing that we've so far learned about the Quran, we're going to learn some more about the Quran now, is that this speech is definitely not rooted in Hawa. It's not rooted in you know, desire and ambition and things like that. Uh, one thing I wanted to say, I, I said a lot about speaking from Hawa yesterday and different, you know, dimensions of that. One dimension I didn't talk about is, obviously when someone wants to become popular, they say things that pander to the crowd and cater to the audience and what's going to give them more momentum and more following. And then some people come along and say, I don't care about the majority. I'm going to say the unpopular truth. Right? And then they spew other nonsense to be antagonists and to be controversial, but that's because they're going after another audience. So they, pres they position themselves as heroes, while actually it's just another kind of hawa. It's, just, it's the same thing as what the others are doing, because they're just cornering their own share of the market, if you will. Right? And the Rasul of Allah وسلم, is neither of those things. The thing, the reason... This is important to mention is these are diseases that you and I are not immune from. And neither is the messaging of Islam. When the messaging of Islam was being presented by the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that is the purest source because he's ma dal, ma ghawa, wa ma yantiq anil hawa. It, that's, that's him. The rest of us, the Quran is pure. The message is pure. But we could be lost, we could be deluded, we could also have hawa. We could be we could be molding the teachings of Islam to cater to to make it more socially acceptable in certain 
environments. The, it's, it's not politically correct to say certain things. So let's not talk about those things. Let's reinterpret some, some things to configure better with modern trends, et cetera, et cetera, right? Because it's otherwise it's too hostile. It's too unacceptable. It's too offensive. Because somebody will be offended. By the way, um, a little surprise for all of you. The Quran is offensive since the, t since the day it was revealed. It's by definition offensive. So that's one, one extreme. But the other extreme is, yeah, we don't care about these kuffar. We're going to speak the haqq. And then they spew all kinds of nonsense also. That's not in the Quran. You're now being aggressive because you think the Quran wants you to be aggressive. Like you have to be loyal to the text, not, re not trying to cater to society. And not trying to react to society either and go against, against society either. Both of those are just hawa. They're both just something you want to do. You want to react this way or that way. The, the, the book of Allah is not a response. The book of Allah is not a reaction. The book of Allah is a constant. You know, asluha thabit wa faru'uha sama. Present it for what it is. You don't have to make it respond to something that, that, you know, that comes and goes. And by the way, that's kind of inside the, the language of najmi idha hawa too. There are things, seasons will come and go. Trends will come and go. But the book is here to stay. It's qayyiman. It stands upright. It's going to stay. Our value system is like that. And the, the reason I get worried now is I, 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 I don't just get a lot of questions. I'm sure scholars, speakers, I'm not one of them. But they get questions, right? And a lot of the questions I get is, how do you respond to this trend? And how do you respond to this new idea? And what's, our, what's the Muslim response to this and this? And, like we want the Muslim response to things, right? And the, the issue I have with that is there's something, we're, we're trying to build a building, but we haven't built the foundation. If we had the foundation right, then we would know these trends have come and other trends will come and yet others will come. But this is a constant. And every time new trends come, guess who they cannot tolerate? They cannot tolerate this religion. So the fact that they cannot tolerate this religion doesn't make the religion invalid and doesn't mean you have to reconfigure the message of Islam so that it can less offend the new trend. Because these trends, let me tell you, they're cannibalist. They, they consume themselves and new trends come in re reaction to these trends and then others react to those trends and they keep collapsing on top of themselves. And that's the history of these trends. They're actually rooted in Balal and Ghai and Hawa. The three things that the Prophet ﷺ is being told he is free from and this message is free from are the three things that are the basis of all these trends. At the, at the heart of all of them is trends. And, and today more than ever, you know, I, I've said this in this series of surahs. I'll say this for you guys too, because it will come up in the next section in, in more clarity. Religions in the world, ancient religions in the world, they had something in common. They were all based on one fundamental idea. Whatever God it is that, or gods it is that we're going to worship, they're going to protect. If we don't worship them, they're going to hurt us in some way. So we should, we should worship them because. That's the best way to keep them off our back, basically. Also, you, you can pass by. It's fine. I, I wasn't saying also to you. Like you got startled with my also. That was an aggressive also, I, I, I confess. Okay. Also, uh, they have wishes. And they're like, if we can worship these gods, they will grant us our wishes. So why did people go up like a thousand steps on top of a mountain and then sacrifice a goat and sit there for eight hours and, and do this. Why? Not for spiritual enlightenment. They went up there because, you know, whoever you are, just make that girl fall in love with me because I really want to marry her. And her father said no. And he, he went up there to just make that happen. Or somebody else made that happen because my neighbor has two goats and I just have one goat and I just need, I need to be the ultimate goat. So give me another goat, you know. Every, people had these wishes and they just wanted their wishes granted. And what are these wishes that you love so much? Hawa. That's what they are. Our religion and the message of this religion is not rooted in what? It's not rooted in Hawa. And you know what's happened in every other religion? Every other religion is rooted. Why should I follow this religion? It will fulfill my Hawa in some way. And when, you know, I'm saying this about other religions and you, you and I are sitting here like, ha! Not Islam, we're immune. Alhamdulillah. No, we're not. 
we have brought hawa into our religion too. You know what's happened? I made so much dua to Allah that I should get into med school and then I didn't get in and that's why I don't pray anymore because my hawa wasn't fulfilled. And so, because the religion should cater to me. I didn't come to surrender to this message. I will follow this message. What do I get in return? What are the benefits? What's the package? Right? This, this is the consumer religion. And we've brought that mentality into Islam and now people are having a faith crisis because their consumerism isn't being met. Because it's, it's not on their terms. لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيكُمْ And we're going to see this explicitly in the surah. Allah will say, لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى He'll say, you know, أَمْ لِلْإِنسَانِ مَا تَمَنَّى Oh, the people, human being is going to get whatever he wishes for? Is that what his thought process is? And that ties directly to وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْحَوَى this religion is, I cannot sell this religion to someone and say, if you follow this religion, there's no more stress, there's no more anxiety, you're not going to have financial problems, your health will be okay, your cancer is going to disappear, diabetes, you know, blood sugar, in fact, you're, you're going to lose weight, everything's going to be great. Just follow Islam. Islam is going to make everything right. Anybody who followed Islam in Mecca, did their life get better or harder? Life was easy before Islam, man. And then Islam, some Sahabi accepts Islam. Now his family's calling him crazy. He's getting kicked out of the house. He's getting beat up. He's getting spit on. He's getting insulted. And he was having an, he had an easy life last weekend. And now it's like, it's like, what is this? What did I just sign up for? It's the opposite of what someone would want. It's the opposite of Hawa. You understand that? And so the, the, the way that the message was presenting itself, and the, the price you had to pay for following this message itself was proof that it's not hawa. Okay, so that, that's the, the, another important consideration. Now, let's move on to ayah number four. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. Now the language is getting even more aggressive because the word ma in Arabic is used for negation, strong negation. But in is another, it's in nafia. There's two kinds of, or three kinds of in, or even more kinds of in in Arabic. And one of them is called in nafia, the, na, the, in of, the, the in of negation. And that's what's being used here in the beginning of the ayah, in huwa illa wahyun yuha. For, for Arabic students or people who are familiar with the language, if you were to say this in very simple language, it would say huwa wahyun. Huwa wahyun. It's, it's revelation. He doesn't speak from his whims. He doesn't speak from things that he loves. It's revelation. It is revelation. And the way you say it is revelation in Arabic is huwa wahyun. But what's happened here? In huwa illa wahyun. And then also a yuha. So there's a lot of additions here. There's an itnab here. Right? And there's, a, there's an ex excessive speech here. And we have to process why that it, you know, what that's doing there. But before we do, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the meanings of the word wahi, which we commonly translated as inspiration or revelation. But what does this word mean? What are its secondary meanings? Where does it come from, right? So wahyun is maktub, shay'un maktub. Wahy was used for something that was carved into a stone, scratches on a stone, light scratches that you can barely read were also called wahy. Wahyun fil hijr, meaning it's, it's it, again, carvings in a stone. And you can tell, I think somebody wrote something here. Sami'atu wahat al ra'd. If you barely heard thunder and nobody else heard it, and you're like, I think I just heard the wahat from wahi, wahat. You know what that means? You barely heard it. And that, the barely heard thunder that's very low in volume was actually called wahat. And then waha ilayhi wa awha ilayhi kallamahu bi kalam and yukhfihi. So waha, the verb was used when you speak to someone in a secretive way, or you communicate with someone in a way that nobody finds out. Like when you message someone and their, their phone goes, Ooh, that's not wahi. Because now everybody's like, hey, did you just get a message? Oh, somebody gets their phone, ding, right? That's, that's not wahi. But if, for example, they do this, uh, you guys don't watch movies, so I, I don't know how to explain this to you, but like, you know, in, in, in the, you know, movies, astaghfirullah, sometimes people are communicating with each other without saying something and they're like, I think it was like, you know, but they make it all too obvious. They're like, <laughs> like <laughs> but if they're communicating with each other in ways that other people can't tell, which is by the way, what, what athletes do sometimes in sports, baseball players, 
you know, soccer, etc. You can have motions, body motions, and they know they're speaking each other's code. That kind of code can also be called wahi. Or a whisper can also be called wahi. Okay? وَمِن ذَلِكَ الْإِحَاءِ إِقَاعُ الْمَعْنَى فِي الْقَلْبِ بِطَرِيقَةٍ خَفِيَةٍ so from this came the idea of awha yuhi iha'an, which is used in the Quran for inspiration, to put something in the heart in a way that is very secretive. فَأَوْحَى إِلَيْهِ مَنْ سَبِّحُوا بُكْرَةً وَعَشِيَّةً Zakariya alayhi salam was told not to speak. Right? He was told not to speak for three days. You remember that story? When he came out of his quarters and people wanted to talk to him, like what happened? With, and he had to tell people, you know, that they should do tasbih of Allah, he did it without being direct because he couldn't speak. So Allah uses what? Indirect speech or, you know, by, by way of gesture, body language, awha ilayhim, right? So similarly, uh, This is another interesting meaning. It's not related to our discussion, but it's part of the dictionary meaning of the word. Uh, awha was used as a verb for someone who used to be poor and then became rich, like they transformed. So how was also used for a great transformation. So that's one of its, its, its uh, subtle meanings. So subtle communication, putting something into the heart of someone. The idea here is Allah is revealing these words to the Prophet ﷺ, but nobody else can hear that communication. There are Sahaba sitting next to him. Jibreel is talking to him. Nobody hears Jibreel's voice. And the Prophet ﷺ just starts reciting. So the communication is happening secretly, right? That's, that's why the word awha is important here. That they are like, when did he get it? When did the we didn't hear anything? We don't see an angel. Ah, but it's in huwa illa wahyun. It is communicated in a secretive way, but it is a very powerful communication. Now let's go into the language. This English list will make sense. I use these big words to intimidate you, but they're actually summaries of the Arabic side. So I'm gonna just explain each of them to you, and you'll understand. Uh, first, uh, first of all, atanwin yufidu ta'zim. Here, you notice in huwa illa wahyun, the un on wahi, the tanwin. That is that can actually be a representation of something grand. That doesn't mean every tanwin in Arabic is ta'zim, but certain ones are. And when you study grammar enough and balagha enough, you'll understand which ones are and which ones aren't. But here, this would mean it is nothing but a remarkable revelation. It's not just right, it's an incredible revelation. And that's coming from the tanween in Wahyun. This is me trying to tell you that one of the important things to contemplate in the Quran is not just the words, but the way that the words are being used. Right? A tanween can make a difference, an al can make a difference, a mansub can make a difference, and majroor can make a difference. These things make a difference in what were how the Arabs were receiving this. We have to do all this technical work to understand it. This was coming, this was hitting them naturally. Right? There was an adjective associated, the greatness, the, the, the grandness was associated when they heard wahyun and it didn't need an explanation. We have to go through the exercise to, to be able to appreciate that. Then there's fawaid al itnab. What that means is there's an overuse of certain things. There's in huwa illa. Instead of saying it is revelation, it is nothing at all but revelation. It cannot be anything else but an incredible revelation. That's how it's being spoken. As if there are three or four exclamation marks at the end of this, this sentence. And it wasn't just revelation. He says, yuha. Wahyun, yuha. Which is extremely strange. Beautifully strange. You don't say it is revelation that has been revealed. Obviously, a revelation has been revealed. You know? Uh, I, I, you know, I shot a shot. You know, because you, you already shot it, so you don't have to say a shot, right? Or you say, I ate, you know, or, or I bit a bite. No, you bit, that's good enough, I, I got it. You don't need to say the bite part, right? Or, you know, I wrote a writing. You, you wrote is enough, I got it. But here he says, it is nothing but revelation, a grand revelation that has been revealed, that has been communicated secretly. Why add that? What that does is it adds another dimension to the meaning. It actually adds the dimension that it keeps on being revealed at the right occasion. So it is, the whole thing is nothing but revelation, but it keeps on coming at the right moments. And will continue to keep. It will keep on coming. Like Allah says, وَقُرْآنًا فَرَقْنَاهُ لِتَقْرَأَهُ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى مُكْثٍ وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا The Qur'an, we broke it apart so you can read it to people at the right occasion. 
and we broke it apart as a gradual revelation. So he keeps on revealing it at the right moments. And that's part of what makes it so grand. وَمِنْ فَوْرِهِمْ هَذَا يُوحَى Also, this ayah could mean this, what you're listening to right now, Surah Al-Najm, is nothing but revelation that is coming down as we speak. In other words, Jibreel is here. The people that were listening to this were like, ah, what did he make stuff up? And when the Prophet is reciting the surah, it's as if he's telling them, by the way, the communication is happening right now in this moment. In this moment. And that you should be on alert. Like, I'm not alone right now. <laughs> Jibreel is here too. And he's the one giving me these words. And I'm sharing them with you. That's, that's a really heavy realization, you understand? That's inside the word yuha. And then, the, the, the in huwa illa also says لا يمكن أن يكون دون وحين. It's not possible for this to be anything else. Contemplate this and you will come to the conclusion this isn't human. This isn't made up. This isn't poetry. This isn't like any other religion. This is nothing but revelation that is coming down. This is nothing but inspiration communicated secretly to this messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then in أَكَدُ نَفْيًا مِنَ الْ so what that means is you saw in the beginning So the expectation here was Because the ma would have continued but he switches from the ma to what word? In to make this the climax of the ultimate statement that's being made as if the whole point of everything that's being said so far rests on this one thing. This is the top of the peak. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. You can think of it like this. Wan najmi idha hawa. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. It's like that. That that this is the connection that's being made. This is the, the peak of it all. Nothing but this. And so uh, so this this ultimate intensification happens inside of this ayah. If you have time, I want you to after we you know we finish the surah Inshallah, one of the courses that I did uh, was called Divine Speech. It was done a long time ago. I've written a book on it too, but it keeps getting out of stock. I think it's in stock now again. But instead, of, I know reading a book can be torture for you, so I, I understand. But on, on Bayna TV, I have the course called Divine Speech. I considered the whole course just an explanation of this statement. How can this only be revelation? Why is it not humanly possible? Right? And... Inshallah, I'll be making some updates to that course because I've been studying a lot, long time since. But I think you should watch it. And it's good, especially for younger audiences because we need to have firsthand appreciation of why we believe this isn't just another religion. This isn't just a faith. This is, there's no alternative. This has to be revelation from God. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. Okay. Hey guys, you just watched a small clip of me explaining the Qur'an in depth as part of the Deeper Look series. Studying the Qur'an in depth can seem like a really intimidating thing that's only meant for scholars. Our job at Bayina is to make deeper study of the Qur'an accessible and easy for all of you. So take us up on that challenge. Join us for this study, the Deeper Look of the Qur'an, for this surah and many other surahs on BayinaTV.com under the Deeper Look section.